Hello there, it's the final part of the Eco Iki Abridged. In the previous part, we held the line a lot, doing a lot of the same battle, but we also wiped out the remnants of the Ashikaga Shogunate. We didn't need to do that, that just takes the pressure off us in terms of the agent spam. And we also secured some more territory around Kyoto, meaning we'll now probably hold it until the time limit runs out and we take the win. We can keep going on our little mission around the lake to secure this bit of territory with the vague goal of linking up with Nagashima Castle. There was an Oda army hanging about, I've got a bunch of armies myself hanging about now, went in to go take these guys out with an auto resolve. I was unsatisfied actually with my three stack attack packed with good units. I thought this would just be like a completely in our favor balance bar. But we do have plenty of damage, I've auto resolved so many fights recently, these armies are starting to die, we need to sort of not advance for a bit. But we're nearly there, we're nearly somewhere good. Annoyingly I couldn't get these troops to all cluster around the castle nearby this turn, so no castle attack. And then it's time for some Negashima action, it's the Oda back with another stack. Pretty good stack, but it's not going to be good enough because you need a few of those to get past these defences. So let's quickly blow them up. Not going to be a very high scoring round of Negashima defence because the enemy have so many samurai and good small units. But we win the battle, we also captured another Mangonel in the process, so a rival for our heroic Mangonel crew. Not a very good score as I said, but that's that. Now the Oda still have more for us this turn, they had another small army which they threw against one of the nearby castles. I'm pretty sure they could see that we had that army outside, so really a suicide attack. And yes, that's another Oda army down, with the same guy again. They've got the same guy leading every army, but with a different name every time. Some sort of trickery going on in the Oda clan. I think they're trying to pretend that they haven't been basically wiped out as an actual dynasty. Anyway, after that, it's about time we had another battle of Negashima. This time the gates are open, guess I blew some of them up in the previous fight, that's annoying. Doesn't make much difference though because we just put samurai in front of the gates. And then we attack the enemy coming in with mangonels, at least this time they have a bunch of militia units so we can grab a few more kills than usual. They also glitched out and about half the army was stuck outside the town, meaning I could have gone for a timer win, however I'm guessing I didn't want to wait for it. So I went out with some Yari Militia to go and just sort of walk about in front of them, eventually prompting a second round of this Negashima Castle battle. This time looks like I played it in fast forward to get even more shots off. And yes, that did the job. When they're attacking with only Militia, the chance of them getting past your sacrificial units is zero, so you don't need to pay any attention. And there we go, we take them out, didn't even bother checking the score by the looks of things. I guess it was a bit better than the last battle, so that's something. And then, once it's our turn again, I can cluster all the units around Azuchi Castle here to come into reinforcement range, getting that pretty decent balance bar, and we'll just take it. And with that, Nagashima is finally linked in to our continuous empire, we actually have a border with it. I think this is the first time that has happened, so a historic moment for the castle that's held out a very long time. And this is going to be our new front line basically, I need to replenish all of these stacks and we don't need to attack the enemy at this stage in the campaign. So we're just going to stand around here and hold this position with Nagashima now at pride of place in the official endgame defensive line. At some point the vassal I made south of the capital got conquered by the Suzuki, so I reconquered them and made them again. Not really for any reason, just makes things a bit neater really. Then at the start of the next turn we get news of a naval invasion, the Honma have snuck a force all the way down to Kyushu. It's not the best force, tons of militia, but they do have some Portuguese troops as well. Surprised this hasn't been happening more considering how many clans there are up the other end of the map. We actually got away with it in this campaign, really nobody was just spamming us with ships, they certainly could have been. So anyway, I send some troops to help defend against the Honma. Here I'm pushing forwards against the Oda a little bit. We were standing next to this really poorly defended castle, so I thought we might as well take it, even though that position's a little bit harder to defend than the one we're in already, just took it anyway. Also turn back because there was an Oda army standing in the midst of all of our stuff, so our stuff swarms them from all directions and we can just take them down with no particular a forethought. We probably could send our blob here and conquer the rest of the Oda stuff, if we really tried, but I'm not going to really try in this case. But apparently I did feel like taking this castle from the Suzuki as the one next to Osaka Castle. I guess it was just 
lightly defended and again I had all these stacks sitting around doing nothing so I thought I might as well do something. And there we go, now our territory is a bit neater again, forming a sort of semi-circular barrier along with the mountains to the south of the capital. Then, we need to do another battle at Negashima. This time though, some of my troops are in reinforcement range, some of our men are actually going to participate from outside the castle, but the thing about that is, they'll probably just die if we actually engage them again, it's better to let the enemy just go in, so I leave the reinforcements outside because the garrison will do fine on its own and this will give us the best ratio most likely. We blow them up and there's the result, we defeated them. Again, what do you know? I don't think the AI has got the idea quite yet, especially the Tokugawa keeps showing up here for some reason. Then we get this Honma attack. So yes, it's mainly just spammed militia units with three Portuguese units that are quite good. We've also, though, got mainly spammed militia units. Well, we do have some Boa Shigeru Garrison who are a little bit better by, like, one stat point. In they come, then. The main issue will be the Portuguese troops because they resist arrows, so they can just run at the wall and climb on in. And we do only have a level one castle and a particularly small one at that. At least the upside to this is our walls are completely garrisoned, we're packed with archers facing all directions, and against the militia we'll pick up a bunch of kills as they come in. But yes, it's still the Portuguese to work against, because once they climb in, they will absolutely slaughter the archers. These Portuguese troops, they're kind of like a hero tier unit, I don't really remember what their stats are, but they generally beat samurai in melee, so they'll certainly beat the Ashigaru units. As for the other militia units attacking, that's less of a problem, because while we're going to be somewhat matched with them, we have the can't route advantage in here, so we'll slaughter a few of them and route most of the enemy units but the Portuguese ones need to be stopped somehow because they're gradually killing everything. I deployed my katana retainers to deal with them. The thing is, the Portuguese are better than the retainers, so we didn't actually kill very many and quickly lost the katanas. There was one other thing I could try though, and that is to use my Naginata nuns. They also have guns, and we can shoot into the distracted Tervios from the side and try to pick up some kills. This was the right idea, I think, it just didn't work. We didn't get enough shots off on them, and it's just not that effective. They are somewhat resistant to gunfire as well. So unfortunately, they slaughter all of the distractions and end up getting the nuns into melee, so that's gonna be bad news. On the other side of the castle, they've just slaughtered absolutely everything. We stopped most of the enemy attack, but it's just the Portuguese units just making their way through slaughtering everything, and these matchlocks as well despite being a ranged unit, are perfectly good in melee. Here they are slaughtering my bow samurai on the capture point. I figured I might be able to take them out with this fire arrow volley at close range from behind. However, the arrows just go through them and hit my side more than anything else. So that is good slash bad, and we do lose everything. Actually, no, we have one nun left alive as the enemy take the capture point and grab the win. So an interesting battle, I figured we'd win that quite easily, but actually those Portuguese units are just so good that we couldn't stop them and we got taken out. Bad news, although it doesn't especially matter for the campaign as a whole. Although things on Kyushu get worse, because after this Honma invasion we also have the Ito, our vassal betrayers, and the other vassal I made down in the Shimazu lands betrays us as well, and they actually come to make this attack. I was quite surprised by this, so far the vassals have all been very friendly towards me, but for whatever reason, they're joining the Kyushu is falling movement. I'd have to send troops back to deal with that, so that's pretty annoying, but of course I don't really intend to. They actually went on to attack another castle after taking one, but they then lost that battle because I had a stack of militia here to defend against naval invasions basically. And that worked out pretty well, another stack of anti-naval invasion militia goes over to attack that castle the Honma just took, and that balance bar is good enough, so we can move on in and finish them off, Portuguese units and all. Meanwhile, on the front line, I'm pushing up against the Hatikiyama, going up the coast with my blob of stacks here. There's not all that much defending against us, and when the enemy do have like a stack of troops, we can just take them down with sheer auto-resolve attrition at this stage. We're not going to do anything fancy. Had the chance to make a general here, I hesitated because I couldn't remember if everyone was about to betray me or something, but no, it's actually pretty good right now. Contrary to what I was claiming in a previous part, I actually am able to gain daimyo honor on whoever is technically our daimyo right now. There's just no way of seeing what it is. But yes, after making those vassals, I did get the loyalty bonus from daimyo honor to come back, so something somewhere kept track of it, and we're back on track with that as a result. And here, as you just saw, 
I basically moved up and took two castles this turn, just getting back into the area we had at the start of the campaign really for no particular reason. Then of course, moving on, the Oda try to attack Negashima Castle. They just love it this time though. Their balance bar is bad because of my hidden stack just behind the castle, so mercifully, we can auto resolve our way past this one without having to do anything. Then there was a battle back in Kyushu because the treacherous Ito go and attack one of our castles. We don't really have anything here, but I was looking at their army and I was like, no, this army definitely can't beat my garrison army. This balance bar is lying and in the name of justice decided to manually resolve it, albeit with the uh, fast forward mode on the entire time. So here they are climbing up the walls like ants and dying en masse to the climb and to the archers at the top. And with most of this stuff just being militia, it doesn't work out for them. I've even got some warrior monks here so I can pop the war cry to make them retreat early on and rout. And once they've routed and started climbing, they're all going to get slaughtered at the top. So that's good, eventually their generals come in as well. And by this point we've got things on the balance bar. I think I sacrificed like one unit of archers in total. And yeah, we annihilated them with no effort whatsoever. That balance bar was indeed lying. And with that, it just so happens that at the start of the next turn we've done it. It's now been a year since we took the capital. The we are declared changed. Shogun, or someone's we declared Shogun. Like I don't know, the kid in our family that's the heir or something. You get a cutscene for that. And then after the cutscene, we've completed the victory conditions as well. So we get another cutscene, the uh, ending one, which is basically the same as the Shogun the becoming cutscene with a few They're minor differences. Shogun. And that's it, the Iko Iki have won the campaign. Strangely, there's kind of no difference between the Iko Iki winning and the Samurai winning. I sort of felt like we were supposed to be distinct from them in some way, but it's somewhere on the line we just became then. And here we are with the iconic final scene, the Iko Iki took over the world and lived happily ever after into the future, where it seems we still rule with an iron fist. Good stuff. So yeah, not really sure what the law of the Ikuiki even is at this point, but apparently it was nothing, stuff just turned out the same, so this was all a bit of a waste of time in terms of the lore of the world, the alternate history. Anyway, that's the end of that. Here are the final campaign stats. I think the only really notable thing is that we did get something like a 10 to 1 kill-death ratio on our units, and thinking about how many of our units lost must have been garrison units, which were then brought back to life with our Iku Iki magic, we probably didn't lose that much stuff at all throughout the war, it was just the other factions being annihilated. The other interesting thing is the agent stats, you can see I recruited tons of agents and lost tons of agents. Basically, most of the agents I recruited just died instantly and didn't do anything. And the ones that survived were the monks hiding at the back doing conversions and stuff, so that was useful at least. And really that's it for the stats, nothing else too interesting going on in there. A successful campaign it seems. That was a difficult one, although a lot of the difficulty is just annoying. It's strange though, because it should have been a lot more difficult I thought. Looking at the map you can see we don't even control half the map at this stage as we win the campaign. There's so much enemy stuff out here, and we've just not seen anything from them. There are these big other factions that just left us alone. And I'm sure the AI does get military access rights through their own territories after a realm divide, so they could walk at us in the fashion that like the Tokugawa were doing. But for whatever reason, they didn't and the naval invasions didn't happen either. I strongly suspect there are actually hard-coded limits in the AI code that stops the AI coalition from attacking you too much to make Realm Divide not be too difficult. So it might be like only five armies can be targeted onto the player at any given time. And all of those armies were taken up by like the Oda throwing stacks against Nagashima and that's why the giant factions like the Uesugi just did nothing for the entire war. That's my theory anyway. So yes, we've won. There would actually be a massive amount of further grind and fighting to move on from here. We could almost certainly take all of the key peninsula, the bit I'm looking at right here, and make a nice narrow choke point along where our border with the Oda is and just settle down there and defend forever actually taking the map and going for like a domination victory, well that would be another 20 episodes and we should probably do something else instead I think. You can see there we had to take 25 regions to win and we got like 75 or something, so we completely obliterated the victory conditions. I think I must have had it on short victory, but because you need the capital I effectively did the long victory conditions in the process of doing the short victory. A classic issue with total war victory conditions. 
Anyway, here's the royal family in case you were wondering, including the awkwardly passed over guy on the end of the family line here who can't be the heir despite being the eldest son of the old daimyo technically, for reasons I don't really understand, but that's fine. We're leaving things here then, so thank you very much for watching the Eco Eco Bridge campaign. That was a bit of a grind and you should be very happy it was a bridge because it was much more of a grind in real life, let me tell you. Coming up next after this, I'm going to be playing some Empire Total War. I was thinking of playing as the Crimean Carnage, but I just discovered they actually suck as a faction. They only have like two units, but I might do it anyway just for the challenge. Let's see how far we can get with only two terrible trash units, something like that. And if that actually turns out to be terrible, I'll probably just go on and play Empire again as a real faction of some kind. So join me for that and of course a whole bunch of other stuff in the future. Thanks for watching.